This is Coombe Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin Jim Marbella. We're at the Carl Grief Show here in Essex at the Civic Hall. With me, making his professional debut, George Hennan and his trainer, Johnny Greaves. First of all, Johnny, how are you? Fantastic, Coog. Yeah, not too bad, mate. Nice and busy at the moment. So, yeah, just trying to think of the money, trying to keep busy. Um, yeah, it's going all right. It's going all right. You must be pleased, George, to get your, your first win under your belt tonight. And uh, how did you assess your performance? Yeah, I felt yeah, I felt really well. I um, felt I was more calm than I thought I was going to be, more relaxed. Um, I had time to think in there. He's it obviously a tricky opponent. Couldn't... It's hard to catch claim with more than one, one, two punches. So, yeah, I felt, felt, felt quite good in there. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. John, we know about Matt C. Right, and you know that is not the most ideal opponent to have as your first fight, is it? I mean, look, Matt does what he does. We know, look, there's been some great fighters that haven't looked good against Matt at all. Um, we know if we stay too close, Matt will grab onto you. Um, look, he'll try and talk you, he'll try and wind you up. So, like I said, I've been saying to. Uh, to the lad here, just just keep your brain, keep your brain together. Just box, do what you do. Try not to get wound up. Um, and that, uh, like I say, follow it through, follow through the game plan really well. So I'm really pleased. I've got really high hopes for George, to be fair. George, tell us a little bit about your amateur experience, if you have any. Oh, I don't. Um, all my amateur experience is from kickboxing. Um, I've been kickboxing for about 13 years, and I switched to went to St Mary's amateur boxing. Um, just trained there for a year, and then I joined on with John. Um, I've just been training for about three, four months with John Solid. Um, yeah, and just turn over. And just yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, we've, we've had massive help before this fight um, with with Ryan Taylor. Oh yeah. Who, without Ryan's help, it, it would have been a struggle. And uh, Romeo and Romeo has also been helping us out. And that's all the sparring we've needed. To be fair, I mean, George, he, he took to bro boxing. Well, I'm not even going to sugarcoat this. I fucked it up, John. <laughs> So we have, we have to carry on. He didn't, want to, he didn't want to say anything. But um, you were saying about his, um, his kickboxer yeah, background. Uh, George come never done no amateur boxing straight out of the kickboxing game. But uh, over the years, I've seen a few lads come from the kickboxing game to, to move on into boxing. They've just found it hard to sort of make the change, obviously with a wide stance, um, a different sort of defence. George has taken to it like ducks of water. And, and like I say, sparring at the gym there, it's just been first class. Um, it's just been absolutely first class. Frank has also helped us out a lot, my brother. Um, and like I said, with George, I've got really high hopes. I think George can go out and do something in this sport, really do. George, it's not a, a common thing, obviously, a transformation from kickboxing to a boxer. Uh, someone that springs to mind is Albert Krauss. Do you know about Albert Krauss from uh, Google Albert Krauss? Because he was a, a, a well known kickboxer from, I think, Holland, and he transformed into a boxer. Uh, so, yeah, Google him. If might learn something. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. Uh, I learn something every day, mate. I tell you, there's not much in this old head, mate. He's all, he all got punched out of me years ago, mate, to be honest with you. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have a look. But, like I say before, I mean, George, uh, from, from kickboxing to, to boxing, it's a completely different sport. But, George, I, I think he's got a, a fair bit of natural talent there. Um, and he's just, just made the transition from one sport to the other just excellently well. well I thought he's, he's done really well. Like I say, I mean... Matt C. Right is really hard to look good against, um, especially like for a, for a, a debut, your debut fight. Matt knows the game, it, like I say, knows all the little tricks and all the holes and the talking and the winding you up. But I think George, we can have asked for a better to, for, for a better start to be honest. So, like so onwards and upwards. Can't, can't wait for the next one now. George, what's your aspirations for 2015? We're in the middle of the year now. Like I said, you've got your first fight out of the way now. So, you know, what's your plans for the, you know, the, the remaining six months? Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, a last week off. Um, so tr been training three three months solid for this one. Um, just gonna have a week off back in the gym and hopefully two two months two three months have, have a second. Um, just yeah, go for just every fight by fight. We're not not take anything too far. But. As you know, Coog, uh, ticket sales. Is, is is what what the, the well, I mean to make the start in boxing you need to sell tickets and obviously it's never it's never easy but I mean hopefully if things keep going right we're looking to get out at least four or five times a year uh, to make the start and then just see where we go but I'm hundred percent positive George has got at least a sub era title in him I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely mean that one hundred percent I think George is a real good fighter so let's see where we go keep getting out get out next time get another win let's see where we go from there it's the only problem about having Johnny Greaves in a in an interview is that he does most of the talking for you which means that you don't really have to say a lot that's what we like that's what we like I'm not much of a talker in I'm if I'm honest but um, yeah we just yeah, we see where we can go John Coog I believe I believe that I can do well in the sport as well so just see where we can go with this 
Paul Fowles, you just go back to your modelling career. <laughs> done a pretty boy, Joel Jennon. Yeah, it looks lovely. Look, oh, mind you, is that... How can you sit next to him, seriously? Is it, he has had to have half his hair cut off tonight because yeah, 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 he went yeah, and got yeah. it braided last night and found it a bit too painful. So I had to cut his hair and he's really proud of that. But two minutes before I was walking to the ring there, he was saying, look, just push me hair back. I don't want a parting in it. <laughs> Come on, now, turn it in. You've got more serious things to think about. Like, he's on the way to the ring. He's telling me how to do his hair. I said, you know, he's not a bit of me. I said, number one or whatever, it'll do it the world of good, to be honest. No, leave the hair alone. Leave the hair alone. He's only just because these ones were seeding bad. Yeah, all right, yeah, thanks for that. Could get a nice one. I think I'll be better off, like, brown paper bag up here, I think, next time, to be honest. No, you're all right. Listen, you're all right. You've had your 100 fights now. Leave it alone. No, nice one. Cheers. Much appreciated. All right, listen, George and Johnny, thanks for talking to IFL TV and uh, we look forward to the pro, you know, keeping tabs on the progress of uh, George in the upcoming months and uh, we'll hopefully catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot, Kogan. Can I just say before we finish, what happens to my job you offered me when I've retired? George, it's been fantastic working for you. I'm really looking forward to your career coming on. Um, like I say, onwards and upwards. Here we go from here, mate. <laughs> <Appreciate> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> Thank you very much.